So psychologists have found that we tell different types of stories about our lives, so stories that have different themes, for example. And two of the themes that they've discovered are stories of redemption and contamination stories. So Dan McAdams, a psychologist at Northwestern University, has studied people who are leading really meaningful lives. And he's found that they all share an interesting pattern in common about the type of story they tell about their lives. They tend to tell these redemption stories about their lives, which are stories that move from bad to good. So for example, um, one man told a story about growing up in dire poverty, and yet he ended the story by saying, even though that he and his family were so poor, that poverty allowed them to really appreciate the good things when those good things came. So there was this bad thing, the, the poverty, and yet it was redeemed by something good. Another type of story that people can tell about their lives is a contamination story. So this is the opposite of a redemptive story. It's a story that moves from good to bad. So I, I spoke to a man, for example, who was a semi-professional football player, and he tragically got paralyzed um, as a result of an injury that he had on the field. As he was telling this story to me, he talked about how there was so much that he felt like he lost as a result of his injury. So he couldn't walk anymore. He was worried, you know, would I, would I get married? Would I ever be able to find a job? Will I ever lead kind of the normal life and do the normal things that people my age do? Um, so he could have told a story about how, you know, he was a professional, a semi-professional football player, was leading a really great life, and then this injury um, kind of derailed him and, and ruined everything. That would be an example of a contamination story. But one of the really interesting things and wonderful things about storytelling is that we're all the authors of our own stories, so we can choose to tell them in particular ways, even as we're constrained by the facts, and we can choose to end them. And the way that we tell that story can have a dramatic impact on how we both understand ourselves and how we end up leading our lives. So the, the athlete who I told you about, um, he didn't end his story there. He kept going and he said, you know, even though my life has been altered in this dramatic way by my injury, what I discovered as a result of it was a newfound sense of purpose in life. Um, before my injury, I was kind of leading a selfish life, he said, where I just cared about having a good time and about partying. Now I really want to help young people who are unsure of what their own path is in life, help them discover their path and help mentor them. So now he works as a mentor within his community and at, at his church. So. That's the story that he ultimately told me. He told me a redemptive story, one that moved from this injury to this higher place of kind of growth and purpose. But he could have told me the other story. It would have been just as easy for him to have ended it um, saying, you know, now my life is just is awful and I, and I don't have, I don't know what I'm going to do. But he told a different story and we all have the power to do that. We can all tell and retell our stories in more positive ways.